society and also uh, uh, dr premjit singh vice chancellor central agricultural university uh, imphal dr b v patel vc raichur uh, us raichur and present and former directors of icar institutes i can see dr chandish madam and dr vargis please welcome to today's function former directors of zsi dr alfred and dr ramakrishnan directors of other icr institutes heads and professors of various divisions of iri faculty members from university of delhi bhu amu other office bearers of entomological society of india scientists and faculty from various icr institutes and saus former heads and uh, professors of our division and also retired members of our entomology family i welcome you all and finally a very warm and special welcome to the family members of dr s pradhan do his daughters mrs shalini varma and mrs ragini nankiolia both of them are here with their sp spouses children and grandchildren they have all taken time of their busy schedules to join this function again a very warm welcome to one and all thank you dr bhageshri continue thank you ma'am for welcoming dignitaries and our participants it is time to cherish the success and contribution of dr s pradhan let us all watch a short documentary highlighting the achievements of dr s pradhan and documentary will be followed by briefing on dr s pradhan memorial lecture series by our head dr devjani day ma'am dr sham sundar lal pradhan had a humble beginning he was born on may 13 1913 at village diva in baharish district of uttar pradesh his father shri guru prasad pradhan was a village level officer of the state government having five sons and three daughters after initial studies at a nearby village school pradhan passed high school examination of up board in 1928 with distinction in mathematics he passed intermediate examination with a gold medal from radha swam under eminent geologist professor k n bal he worked on functional morphology of insects for his dsc degree in 1938 after he joined indian agricultural research institute as assistant entomologist at the institute substation at karnal where he did his famous research on insect ecology then he joined division of entomology in 1948 and established country's first school of insect toxicology dr pradhan became the first professor of entomology in 1958 and head of the division in 1962 and continued till 1973 dr pradhan was a visionary and scientist par excellence with versatile interests he contributed significantly to various aspects of fundamental and applied entomological research he was the first to identify and describe natal glands in coleopterans coiling and uncoiling mechanism of proboscis in lepidoptera homology of male genitalia and regeneration of midgut epithelium in insects having deep understanding of insect crop environment interactions proficiency in mathematical derivations he derived two mathematical equations popularly called as pradhan's equations which explain relationship between temperature and insect development based on these equations 
he developed biometer and biograph these are a ready reconnor for correlating insect development with temperature fluctuations dr pradhan was a pioneer in insect toxicology research and demonstrated strong anti feeding activity of neem he was the first to report insecticide resistance development in singara beetle to ddt and bhc under his leadership division of entomology developed a cheap scientifically fabricated and effective grain storage structure popularly called as pusa bin and the later larger version pusa cubicle he propounded the famous biotic theory on the periodicity of locus cycles which explains the distribution and abundance of locus both in time and space dr pradhan was a gifted teacher and guided the research work of 65 students in the discipline of entomology dr pradhan's scientific papers as well as popular articles bore his characteristic clarity of thought and acumen of presenting complex subjects in a simple form two of his books insect pests of crops and agricultural entomology and pest control would always remain valuable to agricultural scientists besides heading the division of entomology for more than a decade dr pradhan who was a founder member and also president of entomological society of india for four terms the two positions and his towering personality made him the natural leader of the country's crop protection specialist the society took great strides under his stewardship the membership of the society increased and the indian journal of entomology grew in circulation and stature dr pradhan was regarded as an authority on insect ecology toxicology and integrated pest control not only in india but internationally in one such recognition he was invited by unesco as one of the selected six authorities to write different chapters in the book on human and animal ecology he was a member of fao panel of experts on integrated pest management and chaired important sessions of international and national symposia and conferences dr pradhan was chairman of entomology committee of icar for a number of years and guided the planning and implementation of national policies on entomological research teaching and extension for his outstanding contributions dr pradhan was posthumously awarded dr p b sarkar endowment prize for the triennium 1971 to 1974 indian scientists would always remain inspired by dr pradhan's work who was rightly called father of modern applied entomology by late professor k n mehrotra ex head division of entomology icar iari in his memory division of entomology has been organizing series of lectures since 1998 to till date Um, thank you uh, scientists of division of entomology and also the students for uh, making this documentary and highlighting the life and achievements of dr pradhan uh, dr pradhan is regarded as the doyen among entomologists during his professional career of 33 years he brought entomology and plant protection sciences to the forefront of agricultural research in india his contributions to fundamental aspects of insect toxicology insect physiology neem research and periodicity of locust was are evident from his publications and many of his results are till relevant today also he was the first to visualize our country's need for integrated pest management instead of conventional methods of chemical control alone 
which though successful at that time had started showing adverse effects also like development of resistance to different crop pests he considered crop protection as the umbrella under which all other branches of agriculture thrived uh, he joined our division in 1958 and um, uh, in 48 and very soon he became the first professor of entomology in 58 and after that head of division as has been highlighted in the documentary he was a gifted teacher and drew up the curricular of msc and phd courses of the institute many of these courses are still continuing and many of his students who are eminent entomologists themselves remember the lucidity elus uh, lucidity and clarity of his lectures and not only entomology students students of other disciplines also came to attend his classes especially his classes on uh, dominance of insects his research papers over 200 are still a source of uh, reference for all of us his books two of his books they are still ready reckoners for all plant protection scientists of the country to remember his contribution to indian entomology a corpus fund was built with the contributions from in, uh, individual entomologists his family and his well wishers as part of the golden jubilee year of country's independence division of entomology with the support of entomological society of india started dr s pradhan memorial lecture series as has been highlighted in the documentary uh, many stalwarts in the field of research of entomology have given lectures uh, before i end i would just like to bring to your notice the magnanimity or the personal side of dr pradhan in one of the recognitions he was invited by unesco as one of the selected six authorities to write different chapters in the book on human and animal ecology and he felt that since the invitation was because of his work at iiri the honorarium received for writing the book writing the review article was used by him to create an endowment for award of a gold medal every year to the most outstanding postgraduate student of entomology at iiri in the name of his father sri guru prasad pradhan indian entomologists would always remain inspired by dr pradhan's work who was rightly called as father of modern applied entomology by late professor k n mehrotra ex head division of entomology thank you agreshri thank, thank you ma'am thanks to our audio visual team for the wonderful documentary may i now request dr rashmi agarwal ma'am dean and joint director education to introduce the chairman <clears throat> thank you bhagishri uh, good morning once again to all of you uh, honorable director of iiri dr a k singh who is the chairman of today's function our eminent speaker today uh, dr kailash chandra who is director zoological survey of india kolkata um, uh, daughters of uh, dr s pradhan and their family members uh, dr devjani day who is a convener of this uh, particular uh, memorial lecture and also head of the division of entomology dr subhash chandra professor division of entomology distinguished guests uh, on today's function dr chandish balal dr anand dr b v patil dr h s gore dr vargis and many others whom i uh, am not able to name uh, heads of the division and professors of various disciplines of iri heads and professors of various other uh, institutions under icr and state agricultural universities dear students ladies and gentlemen Uh, in fact uh, as dr dev jhani uh, mentioned in the beginning our honorable director is busy with a meet in a meeting with uh, dg icr and soon he will be joining this uh, memorial lecture so it is my honor and proud privilege to introduce the uh, distinguished uh, speaker and all the invitees uh, uh, of today's function dr ak singh dr ak singh is a researcher par excellence and very able administrator and highly acclaimed scientist nationally and internationally uh, 
and um, all of you must agree with me he is recognized as a basmati man of the country so i will briefly uh, touch upon his uh, cv although it's so vast so briefly i will tell everyone and also to the students or faculty uh, dr a k singh uh, is born in a farmer's family in a village barahat gazipur up uh, dr ashok kumar singh did his graduation and post graduation in genetics and plant breeding from banaras hindu university varanasi and phd in genetics from indian agriculture research institute ira new delhi dr singh joined as director iri new delhi on 18 january 2020 earlier he worked as joint director research and head division of genetics icr iri new delhi and dr singh has been actively involved in basmati rice improvement for the last two and a half decades he is associated with the development of 13 rice varieties including five marker assisted selection derived basmati varieties these improved basmati varieties occupy about 1.8 million hectare area bringing prosperity to millions of basmati farmers while earning rupees 25000 crores of foreign exchange annually he has been associated with teaching and and uh, of uh, three post graduate courses in genetics for the last 20 years and has guided 15 phd students and five msc students uh, with three of them winning the prestigious icr jawaharlal nehru award and seven of them awarded with ire merit medals dr singh has published more than 120 peer reviewed research publications in rice vera genetics molecular breeding and grain quality he co-authored a book entitled marker assisted plant breeding principles and practices published by springer dr singh pioneered the public private partnership model for commercialization of first super fine grain aromatic rice hybrid pusa rs10 and several basmati rice varieties generating revenue of 2 crores for the institute he has served as an expert member in dbt epida rsc member in nrri katak <coughs> icr mbpgr iar etc and also sec member in nipgr nabi he has been awarded with prestigious uh, large number of awards but i will mention a few of the prestigious award icr's rafi ahmed kidwai award then icr's bharat ratna dr c subramanian award during 2013 he has also been recognized with ira best teacher award in 2002 ira bp uh, paul award in 2007 icr special recognition certificate in 2009 agriculture leadership award in 2011 borlog award in 2012 dr as chima award again in 2012 and shri om prakash basin award in 2017 he is fellow of indian national science academy new delhi National Academy of Agriculture Sciences, New Delhi, and Indian Society of Genetics and Plant Breeding. So this is a, this in brief. I have talked to you about the CV of our Honorable Director, Dr. A K Singh. So with these words, on behalf of Director and on my own on behalf, I welcome all of you on this twelfth Dr. Uh, S Pradhan Memorial Lecture, uh, which is in the series. And um, thank you. for inviting me and uh, welcome all of you once again thank you thank you ma'am for inviting our chairman may i request dr devjani dev ma'am convener and head division of entomology to introduce today's speaker dr kailash chandra sir it is my privilege proud privilege to introduce today's speaker in fact his biodata is too huge and i just do not know whether i have done justice in shortening it uh dr kailash chandra received his graduation and post graduation degrees from kanpur university and his phd degree from kurukshetra university on taxonomy of scarabid beetles and he continued working on the same group for 3 years at iri at our division in national pusa collection at iri thereafter a short stint 
at Malaria Research Center, Jabalpur. He joined Zoological Survey of India in 1989 as scientist SD. He continued to serve ZSI for the last 31 years in various uh, capacities at its regional centers like High Altitude Zoology Research Center, Solon, Andaman Nicobar Regional Center, Port Blair, Central Zone Regional Center, Jabalpur, and finally, he joined ZSI as its director for the last, and he is there as director for the last five years at its headquarters in Kolkata. Dr. Chandra has a very rich experience of nearly 38 years in the field of insect taxonomy, especially Coleoptera taxonomy. During this period, he has undertaken 43 faunistic surveys covering various ecosystems, protected areas, biogeographic zones of India, for survey and collection of insects. And he has augmented national zoological collection of ZSI with nearly 25,000 identified and registered specimens. He has been instrumental in establishing the permanent infrastructure of ZSI regional stations at Port Blair and Jabalpur. He represented ZSI in the 21st Indian scientific, uh, scientific expedition to Antarctica to study the faunal elements during 2001 and 2. He has completed uh, a huge number of environmental impact assessment studies for Ministry of Environment and Forest and also for many of the big corporates. Under the able guidance of Dr. Chandra as director, numerous publications have emerged from ZSI, state fauna, uh, fauna volumes for the states of Chhattisgarh, uh, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Sikkim, Tamil Nadu, Punjab, Kerala, Andaman, and Andaman and Nicobar Islands have been published. Comprehensive accounts of fine faunal diversity of varied ecosystems like that of marine ecosystem with more than 20,000 spe uh, species reported. Freshwater ecosystem, estuarine ecosystem, mangrove ecosystem, and seagrass ecosystem. And all these have been published in the form of books. Further, a treatise on faunal diversity of biogeographic hotspots of our country, such as Indian Himalayans, Himalayas, Trans Himalayas, and various islands and northeast also have been published, which list more than 50,000 species from India. Dr. Chandra described 86 species and three genera new to science and reported more than 80 insect species as first records for India. His publications include 64 books and around 400 research papers in national and international journals. And he has guided 11 PhD students and currently eight students are also uh, working under him for their PhD. Currently he is involved in several large grant projects which have been funded by National Mission of Himalayan Studies uh, under Ministry of Environment and Forest, biodiversity assessment through long-term monitoring in Indian Himalayan landscape, then lepidopterans as potential indicator taxa for climate change in Indian Himalayan landscape and conservation of threatened vertebrate fauna in Indian Himalayan region through long-term monitoring and capacity building. He is a member of several national and international committees and recipient of several awards of prestigious societies, has represented our country in international conferences in uh, meetings and international con uh, conferences no, uh, held in different countries, noteworthy other COP, IUCN, and sites. He has also, also contributed immensely for disseminating knowledge to governmental and non-governmental agencies in the field of not only taxonomy, but also wildlife forensics, DNA barcoding, and taxidermy of zoological organisms. Um, I hope I have ju uh, done justice to his huge experience and biodata. And uh, I think now we'll invite him for the lecture. Yes, Dr. Bhagyashree. Thank you, ma'am, for introducing the speaker.
Now I would call upon speaker of the day, Dr. Kailash Chandra Sir, Director, Zoological Survey of India, to deliver the twelfth Dr. S. Pradhan Memorial Lecture. Thank Sir, you very much, uh, Dr. Dev Jani Day, for your uh, very elaborative uh, uh, introduction. Uh, I very good morning to everyone. Today's uh, chief guest, Dr. A. K. Singh, Director. Uh, ICR Indian Agriculture Research New Delhi. He is also the Vice Chancellor of uh, IRI. Uh, Dr. Rasmi Agrawal, Dean and Joint Director, Education IRI New Delhi. Dr. Uh, Dev Jani Day, uh, who is the convener of this program. She is uh, heading uh, Division of Entomology, IRI. Dr. Subhash Chandar, Professor, Division of Entomology. Dr. Ram Murthy, former principal scientist, IRI, Entomological Society of India. Uh, there are several uh, esteemed guests, Dr. J.R.B. Alfred, Dr. Ramakrishna, our former uh, director of Geological Survey of India, Dr. Anand is present there, Dr. Subramaniam, uh, Dr. Uh, Chandis Balal, our uh, director of uh, uh, NBIIR, Dr. Chitra Srivastava, or the former uh, head of division of entomology. Uh, there are many other vice chancellor from various universities, principal scientists from division of entomology, scientists, staff, students, and researchers from division of entomology, and all the participants. It's indeed a great pleasure for me uh, to join uh, today's uh, 12th Dr. S. Pradhan Memorial Lecture. And I express my heartfelt gratitude to Dr. A.K. Singh, Director IERI, as well as Dr. Rasmi Agrawal and Dr. Devjani Day, Head Division of Entomology, for inviting me to present this prestigious 12th Dr. S. Pradhan Memorial Lecture, organized by the Division of Entomology, which is uh, uh, acclaimed for the uh, Entomological uh, Research Work in India, established uh, in 1905 by the Britishers. Earlier, the name of the IRI, when it was uh, established in Pusa, Bihar, it was named as uh, Imperial Agriculture Research Institute, and later on it was shifted to IRI New Delhi. IRI New Delhi has uh, contributed to great for the green revolution of our country under the leadership of Dr. M.S. Uh, Swaminathan. And when the, our Prime Minister, uh, Dr. Uh, Lal Bahadur Shastri was there, uh, Honorable uh, Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri, uh, Premiership. And it's really uh, my privilege and proud moment to present uh, 12th Dr. S. Pradhan Memorial Lecture the most important uh, reason behind that uh, I have already worked in IRI for more than three years, from 1985 to 88. And uh, it was really a wonderful experience during that period. I could uh, just experience the galaxy of scientists working in division of entomology. More than 70 scientists were there. I do not uh, say how many numbers are presently at there. At my today's uh, uh, lecture is dedicated to Professor Kian Mahalotra, as well as uh, Dr. Suraj Ghai. Uh, Dr. Bhatia was then the head of division of entomology, and I was working under uh, Dr. Suraj Ghai. He had one project on uh, All India Coordinated Project of the ICR. Uh, working in IRI, I had given him a lot of impetus in entomology. Earlier, I just did my PhD from Kurukshetra University, Kurukshetra under Dr. I.C. Mittal. By Allah, but I learned a lot uh, in IRI during my associateship. And today's my this uh, lecture is dedicated to Professor Kian Mahalotra and Dr. Suraj Ghai, under whom I have learned uh, the taxonomy 
uh, not uh, much about this pest control and the dynamics and insect uh, toxicology, but a lot of inspiration I could get from Dr. Kyan Mahotra. And he was kind enough to me to support in many ways. Uh, although I have completed more than 80, 38 years of uh, my actually experience in insect taxonomy, working in Geological Survey of India for the last 31 years. But since last few decades, what I have observed, that there had been a paradigm shift in uh, overall management and control of insect pests and diseases. And there has been a realization that although the use of chemical pesticides and insecticides had improved the crop productivity, but there has been a huge impact on other beneficial funnel components, breaking the fruit chain and the presence of chemical residue in food uh, crops and ultimately leading to a uh, lot of our uh, problems for the human health, as well as the imbalance in the ecosystems. And that has given the threat to entire our uh, ecosystems. As we understand, Dr. Pradhan, to whom we call as a father of applied uh, entomology in India. And he also advocated for the integrated approach for the pest control in India. And from since then only this IPM started. And so today's my lecture, I would be giving many, uh, much emphasis on the insect diversity in India. What is the present status? Then how many ecosystems are there? What is the diversity in these all ecosystems? Uh, not much, but I would be also touching about uh, some uh, beneficial insects and what are the insects which are uh, playing the major role in uh, ecosystem services. So I have selected the topic today, that is entomofauna, ecosystems and economics for this lecture, wherein I'll, I think, uh, uh, sharing my slide presentation. And uh, at last, I would be touching upon some information about the molecular systematic program, which was initiated in uh, 2011 in headquarters, Kolkata, as well as the several regional centers, and how it is applicable for the integrated pest management. Uh, may I uh, upload uh, the presentation, madam? Yes, sir. Please do. Just one second. Is it sharing now? Yes. Please. I make full screen now. Full screen. Yes, you make it full screen. You make it. Okay. Full screen. So, I will present uh, uh, my actually topic on uh, entomofauna, ecosystems, uh, and economics. Uh, before my presentation, I would like to uh, state that it's not my only my work, but uh, the team uh, in Geological Survey of India. I uh, have been contributed for uh, this particular presentation. Uh, before I start my topic on entomofauna, ecosystems and economics, just with few uh, slides, I would be sharing the activities which we have been undertaking in Geological Survey of India for more than a century. JSI was established uh, in 1916. So it's uh, almost completing more than a century. All 104 years uh, have already been completed for serving the nation through taxonomic studies and documenting the country's vast faunal diversity, starting from the proto Jova to the Mammalia. And I can very much uh, vouch for it. This is the only organization in India which uh, has been studying the, all the group of animals, starting from the cell, one single cell animals to the largest animal, which is known from the country. 
not only the group of uh, animals which have been explored and documented, but also all the uh, ecosystems, starting from the deep sea to the Himalayas, all the biogeographic zones, all the ecosystems, entire 36 states and union territories, the, all the districts of our country. Then there are 907 protected areas in the country, including national park, wildlife sanctuaries, community reserves, as well as the conservation reserves. The main task is the discovering the undiscovered. And then only we can have the total assessment of our biodiversity, which is uh, available in our country. And not only to know what are those species present uh, in the ecosystems, but there is also necessity to have a long-term monitoring and conservation of the fauna by conducting state survey of protected species. Already uh, 703 species have already been included under uh, IUCN, and there are 2,800 uh, species which are protected under the Wildlife Protection Act, as well as the fauna of uh, wildlife protected areas, identification of the wildlife seized material through and then DNA bonding capacity building to the student churches out of the conversation. One to national international agenda for the biodiversity conservation, that is the conventional of biodiversity, and then conference of the parties, IG targets, sustainable development goals. IUCN, CITES, Convention of the Migratory Species, the ultimate is to have the goal when we do not have the to have the distinction to the existence. If at all any procedure in the condition are protected and those recovery programs have to be implemented by all us. So uh, which is the mayor is we have about five eight billion specimens animals go to mammalia, including 10,000 type specimens on the basis of those specimens or species are described and all those specimens are registered. They are the voucher specimens as well as the type specimens. And these type specimens are being digitized and anyone can access in the website of Geological Survey of India, there are about 12,000 specimens. And those photographs are in such reasons that anyone can access them and enlarge them getting the, all the detailed correct the specimens. So this is the program which has been going on for the last five years. I'm happy to share it. 12,000 specimens of type have all been digits and they have all the barcodes access it's open to everyone in the world, and they can see it and compare the specimens. In that cell, I just like to share, it's difficult to uh, share the entire activity, as well as the uh, progress of geological survey of India within a few slides. So at present, we have uh, 101,261 species of animals known from our country, and that list in the table has been uh, published in one of the book that is Animal Discoveries. Every year we are published this series, 2019, we have updated the information. Already JSI scientists have uh, described 5,600 new species from India. And it's abroad, uh, there are 5.6 5 million specimens, of 3.8 million specimens are 
identified. We do have the seat of all as well as unidentified specimens present in across the country. Group of animals and the research which have been published for more than a uh, more than a century uh, have been uh, digitized and that is also available in the website is fauna of uh, India dot and wherein 1600 documents which are in the book form have been digitized and are also more than 10,500 publications articles also they are available in the website. Apart from that, we are talking to see in, uh, during last one decade with the establishment of a molecular systematic division in Quarter Kolkata, around 6,000 plus DNA sequences had been uploaded in the BOLT uh, NCBI database, and that is also accessible to anyone. This is the table, a uh, very brief and uh, table about the diversity, which is known from India about the fauna. Protozoa, we have uh, 3,545 species, of uh, which 640 species are endemic. Invertebrates, they comprise uh, 91,800 uh, species. Of these 26,782 species are uh, endemic. That includes spiders, ticks, mites, earthworms, crabs, mollusks, worms, sponges. But major component is uh, belonging to the hexapoda that we call as insects. And 66,911 species are included within this uh, uh, component. As far as the vertebrates are concerned, uh, fishes, amphibia, reptilia, birds, and mammals. Uh, fishes, we have uh, 482 species, amphibia 287, then reptilia 220, then birds uh, uh, 81 and 45, they are endemic to the India. And there are 6,816 species which are uh, comprising all the group of uh, vertebrates. And if you see the endemic percentage also, it's mentioned there, and total 28,537 species are endemic to our country. What is the significance of uh, insects? Because today uh, I'm presenting uh, on the topic of the insects, and uh, that is entomofauna in any of the space in the country, and there are uh, how many of them are in the ecosystems, what are the ecosystem services, then at last it's about their economic benefits. As far as the significance of insects is concerned, many of you are already aware, uh, insects are significant component of both terrestrial and uh, aquatic ecosystems. Uh, they have been found in all uh, North as well as the South Poles, even from the highest um, uh, mountains. They are found in the land and air and almost uh, all the freshwater ecosystems. From the marine area, very few uh, insects uh, have been recorded so far from India. It may be around 15 to 16 species have been recorded from the vast area of the marine ecosystems. And they contribute to the uh, ecosystem functions such as a nutrient cycle, pollination, and the seed dispersal. They are the, in some part of the country, uh, particularly our uh, indigenous people, they have been the, uh, having the value for the food source and they're also being used as the biocontrol of other organisms as a predator, parasites, as well as the parasitoids. Maintain and enhance the soil the structure and the fertility. They are uh, profoundly beneficial as the pollinators produce silk, honey, wax, and many other uh, products. When they come into direct competition with the human, then they are called as a pest. That is a very important uh, line which I am mentioning. So they are uh, naturally, none of these insects are the pest, but when they come into direct competition with the humans, then only they have been termed as a pest of agriculture 
as well as the stored products. They are the vectors of the life-threatening diseases, as well as uh, of the medical and veterinary significance. They are bioindicator to assess the health of all the ecosystems. According to National Geographic uh, information recently published, there are 1.4 billion insects per every human. So we can understand what is the biomass of insects, although they uh, constitute more than 65% in India itself, but as far as the biomass is concerned, 1.4 billion specimens against one a human being that has been estimated. And that's also being, uh, I think, cited by the National Geographic. As far as the record of uh, insects uh, in India and the global uh, situation there, Bombyx morai that we call as a silk worm and it's also known as the mulberry silk, it started uh, before uh, 2700 BC. It's a cultivation. And it was also the uh, patient life of the China uh, in 4000 and 3000 BC, even in our epic uh, uh, Pali book, classic Mahabharata, uh, records the work of uh, uh, Patanga and Laksha. There is a mention as well as the lark insects. And use of honey and its relation to the honeybees have been mentioned in many other references. That's uh, Makshika as well as the Bhamra. So Bhamra means uh, the Madhumakhi. In India, systematic studies uh, started actually obviously from the European, during the time of uh, European traders. And the Carl Linnaeus, to whom we call as the father of taxonomy, he published uh, several uh, editions. In the 10th editions uh, of the System and Naturae, published in 1758, and in the Fabricius publication, they included uh, 28 species. Later on, from the IERI and the Ro Royal Soci Asiatic Society of Bengal uh, in 1784, they started uh, working on the insects. Some of the Britishers, they have started publishing. And then some earlier excellent work include Donovan's 1800, 1800 onwards to up to 1804. An epitome of the natural history of insects was published by J Jesse Wood in 1842. What is the affinity of the fauna, as well as the insect fauna in our country? Coming to the main topic, that is entomofauna, ecosystem, as well as uh, economics. India represents two of the major uh, biogeographic realms, that is Paleartic, as well as the indo malayan And there are the three biomes, tropical humid forest, tropical dry deciduous forest, as well as uh, warm and semi deserts. Altogether today, we have a uh, updation of the insect fauna, which have been compiled by Geological Survey of India. We have uh, the list of uh, 102,161 faunal species from all the 36 states and union territories, all the ecosystems, by 10 biogeographic zones, 907 protected areas from the country, this sub hylum hexapoda, which uh, we have been considering earlier as uh, insecta, now that has been upgraded uh, to sub phylum and hexapoda means uh, presence of three pairs of legs. And then hexapoda has been divided into four uh, classes that is a uh, protura, columbula, diplura, and the insecta. So within hexapoda, my presentation will be actually pertaining to entire hexapoda. Uh, total now species are uh, 66,911 species. This information has not yet been published, but uh, uh, total species which have been included in our recent uh, publication of animal discoveries, that is uh, uh, 65,867 species. This is again up to date for the present uh, uh, our uh, lecture. So out of uh, 26 orders, there are eight insect orders like uh, Coleoptera, uh, Labdoptera, Hemioptera, Diptera, and uh, Hemiptera, Orthoptera, Thysoptera, and uh, Odonata. They constitute 94% uh, of the insect of the country. Our remaining eight orders, they comprise just 6% uh, of the 
insect harvest in India. This is a graph. You can see it, how many species are the Indian fauna, then how many of them are the arthropods, more than 75%, and then insect species which have been updated by zoological survey. This is the insect fauna from time to time. It started from 1758, when 28 species were uh, mentioned by uh, Carl Linnaeus, uh, the father of uh, taxonomy. And uh, you'll be surprised to know that Carl Linnaeus himself had described 7,700 species of the plants and 4,400 species of the uh, animals globally. Later on, Maxwell Lefroy included in his documents uh, 25,700, then Beeson and Menon 1965, 40,000 to 50,000 species in lump sum they were given, included in the publication. Varsene from Geological Survey of India in his publication of uh, 1998, uh, that is actually the Founder Daoist in India, published by Geological Survey of India that included 59,353 species. And recently we have uh, uh, updated the information and the one publication was made in uh, WII, one ANVIS uh, book, and therein, in uh, 63,767 63, species were implemented. Madam, some disturbance, Dr. Nabjani. Somebody is speaking, please mute yourself, Dr. Radha. Dr. Radha, Dr. Radha. Dr. Radha, please mute yourself. From your side, madam. So please admin, please mute uh, the mic. Because you have a pen drive, you have to keep it with you, which I have given you. So that you don't have anything to do. I'm getting disturbed, yeah, madam. Where are you, admin? <laughs> Dr. Burman. Yeah. Please mute you. Now you will see, I'll tell you. Dr. Devjani. Thank you, madam. So now, uh, 5.5 million insects uh, globally of which uh, we have estimated about 0.5 million species, means uh, there is a possibility of uh, uh, existence of 5 lakh species from India. This is the total insect diversity, uh, subphylum hexapoda in India. And uh, what are the lesser known uh, group of insects which still need uh, attention? So out of these four classes and 26 orders of insects, there are uh, six orders which are having the percentage more than uh, seven and the remaining orders are uh, ranging from the one to seven percent. So one can see that still about uh, 20 orders which are not being uh, explored and they have not been given the due attention. Uh, like uh, Archaeognatha, Gigantoma, and uh, Imbioptera, Socoptera, Stepsiptera, Siphonoptera, and Mycoptera. These are the uh, seven orders. We do not have even the expertise in our country. Only one or two scientists, they might be working, like uh, one. Uh, uh, in West Bengal is working in step shiftera. And total, you can see the, even the percentage of the hexapoda, which is known if you compare the whole world data, it is only the 6.2% of the global uh, insect diversity. So that is also less than the average, which is the fauna diversity in India. It's around 7% uh, in, in our country. This is uh, the information I'm sharing about the entomofauna in various ecosystems of India. And this also has been compiled by Geological Survey of India. Uh, JDSI has uh, uh, published the documents on uh, agroecosystems. Uh, there are two aquatic ecosystems like freshwater, marine, then soil ecosystem, forest. Forest has not yet been published, but uh, that species have been estimated. Then mangrove, document already published from the Himalaya, cold desert, 
already published in the Trans Himalaya, then Desert and Island already published. So you can see that uh, number of species uh, which have been reported from uh, all these ecosystems like uh, agro ecosystems. Uh, total faunal components are the 5,820 species out of uh, 5,820 species of uh, all the group of animals. 3,130 species have been recorded from the agro ecosystems and that comprises of the 53.6% of the, all the species of the agro systems. And if you compare with the whole uh, insect fauna of India, it is coming just 4.7%. Uh, Similarly, for the freshwater ecosystems, you could see here uh, 9,456 species of all the group of animals have been reported from uh, freshwater ecosystems and insects are pertaining to 4,976 species, they are 52%. Similarly, for all our marine, we have just uh, 10 species of the halobates and four or five more genera have been also recorded from the coastal area in all around our uh, marine ecosystem across our country. So it's a very, very few species from the marine ecosystem. Soil fauna has been documented at least estimate, and uh, there we have uh, found that more than 22,536 have been reported from India, of which 13,711 species have been uh, uh, representing the insects. Then forest, as uh, entire our uh, country is having 22% of the forest of the area, and most of the species have been uh, found in this vegetation. So out of 66,911 species, 63,733 species are supposed to be there in the forest depart, uh, forest uh, ecosystems. And that uh, figure we have found out from uh, deleting the agro uh, ecosystem species, as well as the marine uh, uh, ecosystem. Then from my, uh, mangrove ecosystems, uh, 1,461 species, they are in, mostly in the coastal regions. They have been recorded from Himalaya, uh, which is uh, actually one of the Badawasti hottest spot in India, out of four Badawasti hottest spots, that is in uh, Northeast Himalaya, Western Ghat, and Andaman Nicoba Islands. The maximum diversity of insects, if you compare with any of the uh, 10 biogeographic zone in India, uh, 25,064 species of insects, they have been listed, documented, as well as published. Anyone can access in the website, and the document on the fauna diversity of the Himalaya is already available. Then from cold desert, that is Trans Himalaya, Ladakh, some part of the Himachal, uh, Uttarakhand, Sikkim uh, have been included this uh, cold desert area. Uh, 2,291 uh, species reported from the cold desert. Desert, 1,561 species, then islands, which has got the actually huge diversity of insects. And I would like to mention here, the area of uh, these islands is just 0 0.25 species. From Similarly, you can see all orders and maximum orders are represented from the Himalaya, followed by the Trans Himalaya, then the desert and then the mangrove very less number of uh, orders have been represented from the aquatic as well as agro ecosystems. So this is the complete uh, order wise list. This information is also not yet published uh, in a combined way in the document. And those reference, we have taken it from different documents which are by, published by Geological Survey of India. So separately all ecosystems, if you discuss here, uh, like our agro ecosystems, 
these are modified for the production of food and other domesticated vegetation products and they are commonly uh, known as agro ecosystems i will not go into the detail but presently 3130 species comprising a plus columbola insecta uh, pertaining to 11 orders have been reported from the agro system i'm talking about the whole country and then dominant orders are the hemiptera that is uh, 985 species and then followed by the hemiptera then uh, uh, lepidoptera and the, there are coleoptera so i found the total loss because of the insect pest is there it's around uh, 35 million dollars coming to this aquatic ecosystems which has also been uh, re recently published by geological survey of india uh, fresh water habitats cover less than 1% of the earth surface and india is having 4% of the world fresh water resources which is present in the lakes ponds rivers streams springs uh, and wetlands and the global fresh water biodiversity includes 140000 fallen species across uh, uh the whole world of which 9456 species have been reported uh, uh, from india and the arthropoda uh, that represents 5923 species so different groups are again uh, given here from the order wise in tomo fauna in aquatic ecosystems marine as i have mentioned there before the 10 species of the halobates and there are the five genus uh, and then odomancia and culicoids which are found in the sea so uh, they have been reported from the marine systems but uh, uh, actually there are uh, no marine insects remain submerged throughout their lives so that is very very interesting because they do not complete uh, their life cycle uh, because there are uh, presence of the calcium in the sea waters in tomo fauna and sea uh, in soil uh, ecosystems this is uh, what we call as the below ground uh, uh, diversity and uh, there are actually 13700 insect species depend directly or indirectly on the soil ecosystems that comprises 60% of the overall soil fauna of the country 22586 species of uh, total animals have been uh, uh, reported spring tails protuberant then diaplurans beetles bugs and termites crickets are ubiquitous among the soil microarthropods which are there in the abundance in tomo fauna in the forest uh, we could not publish the entire uh, uh, insect fauna in the forest ecosystems but as per estimation uh, more than 63000 species are estimated uh, reason being uh, all these species have uh, uh, actually evolved from the forest ecosystems and the vegetation only so all those species are supposed to be found uh, Uh, and they are also uh, the habitat for all uh, these species in tomo fauna in the man group i have already mentioned that uh, 1461 species belonging to different uh, group orders they have been uh, uh, published across the uh, 12 states and union territories starting in the eastern coast man group from the or west bengal up to this uh, tamil nadu from tamil nadu up to the gujarat in the western coast man group including uh, nicobar islands as well as the lakshadweep group of islands this document is also published by geological survey of india and uh, indian himalayan region uh, which i have already mentioned this is the maximum diversity of insects as well as the fauna in any one of the biogeographic zone is the indian himalayan so it may be quite interesting for our uh, participants and the scientists if they want to have a citation and uh, they have been asked any time they could mention that uh, fauna of uh, uh, himalayan uh, uh, ecosystems himalaya is uh, having the maximum diversity of uh, insects as well as the fauna in tomo fauna in the cold desert that includes uh, ladakh and kargil region in the jammu and kashmir 
Laulan, Spiti, Wileys, and Poof, Tassil in Himachal Pradesh, and some of the area in Himachal, Uttarakhand, as well as in Sikkim, like Kanjanjanga range. Uh, from a cold desert also, uh, 2,291 species of the total faunal diversity have been recorded, and there is a uh, uh, existence of 1,031 species from the all these uh, cold desert region. As far as the desert is concerned, this area is uh, the western uh, part of our India, uh, comprising the state of uh, uh, Rajasthan and some of the Kutch area of the Gujarat. Most of the third desert is included in the desert uh, ecosystem. And from there also entire our uh, uh, fauna diversity has been uh, cataloged and we have the list of complete species and that uh, insect itself is uh, 1,561 species known from the desert region. From Andaman Nicob Island, I have already mentioned that despite of having the 0.25% of the geographical area, 5.4% of the overall insect diversity known from these islands. Uh, coming to the economic part, uh, to this our major insect pest, which uh, as per our broader classification, we have the three class Seventy-one species. I'm just. Sir, sir, you are mute, sir. Dr. Talash, your, your, your screen has disappeared. Okay, now is it all right, Dr. Swachandraji? Uh, is it all no, right? No, no. no that sir. presentation has disappeared. Oh, then again, I have to upload it. Yeah. Now? From here, I... Again, I have to upload... I think, I think, yeah. Because of net connectivity, I think somewhere. Mm -hmm. Net connectivity. Start video, bro. Okay. Ah, I just managed to start video. Now is it all right or not? Sir, you are visible, but not the slides. Slides are no. not visible. Ah, yes. yes. Now uh, it is all right? Yeah, make it full screen, sir. OK, OK, OK. I think it, now it's all right. Yes, yes. OK. so. I will again begin with the major insect pest. As I have mentioned, that insect diversity in India comprising of 66,911 species pertaining to 640 families and 26 orders. Uh, and there are the three classes, Protura, Columbra, and Diapleura. 
apart from the other insecta. If you compare uh, the insect diversity in uh, entire agro ecosystems, as per uh, our compilation, we have uh, 3,130 species reported from India pertaining to 14 orders. And uh, there are uh, major insect pests on which a lot of our uh, uh, projects and program are being implemented by ICR. There are 271 species uh, in 49 agriculture crops. And these uh, insects are just uh, uh, comprising just 0.4% of the whole insect diversity of India. So the purpose of uh, comparing this figure was to highlight the issue that maximum number of more than 99.6% of the species of insects are beneficial to us and other 0.4 percent uh, although they have been uh, listed as the pest and which we have made as a pest here again there are eight orders uh, out of uh, 26 order and four classes like lepidoptera hemiptera coleoptera diptera and hymenoptera sisonoptera isoptera and orthoptera they are having very few uh, number of species like lepidoptera we have uh, 99 species, Hemiptera, 84 species, Coleoptera, just 53 species of beetles, flies, 18 species, then Hymenoptera, just three species that have been included as the major pest, and Thyshoreoptera, that is the thrips, 11 species, only two species of the termites, and one species of the grasshoppers. This is, these are the families of uh, these uh, orders, and uh, how many uh, families are there? There's 49 families. You can just see it. Uh, one can get it. This is the number of uh, crops, cash crops, then cereal crops, fiber crops, the fruit crops, pulse crops, oil crops. This is uh, all the information is already known to all our uh, entomologists, particularly IRI. I don't want to mention it here. Then coming to this ecosystem services, first is the pollination. And insects are responsible for the pollination of about 80% uh, of the trees and bushes on the entire planet. And this is also the published information. Barring few of the self pollination and the wind, wind population, uh, majority of the agriculture and wild plants depends on the animals. It's not only insects, but there are many other group of uh, animals uh, like our uh, bats, birds, primates, marsupials, rodents, and reptiles, they also play a major, actually, role for the pollination of the species. Even last week, there was one conference uh, organized by Kolkata University. They have, uh, there are some of the scientists that they, they have shown that the bats are exclusively responsible for uh, uh, pollination of the wild banana, as well as the domesticated uh, uh, banana species. So there is a lot of, uh, actually, studies which are to be taken up for uh, this pollination. And as per IPBS, what we call as the Intergovernmental uh, Science Policy Platform, the Biodiversity and Ecosystems, uh, it's an international platform. Uh, they have assessed in 2016 that uh, there is uh, uh, nearly five to 8% of the global crop protections, and that is having the market value of uh, the pollination and the ecosystem, that is 235 billion to 577 billion dollars dollars worth globally. There are a few group of uh, insects which uh, play a major role. I'm not including all groups like hymenoptera, bees, and wasps. So globally, around uh, 20,473 species of bees have been uh, known throughout the world. And presently, we have actually uh, listed as well as uh, compiled the information for the entire uh, super family of Apoidea at present. 817 species of the APs and non APs bees have been compiled by JSI, and that is also being published by Saini and Chandra in 2019. Anyone interested could uh, have this information from uh, JSI. Bees are the pollen specialist on the particular kind of flowers, and even uh, there are uh, some of the species are the generalist, and different types of the bees have uh, different but strong. Uh, preferences. So there are some species which are pollinating to a specific crops. Uh, the previously main focus was only for domesticated these uh, few species of uh, bees. 
but six species of bees have been reported from uh, India. That is Apis serrana, Apis mellifera, which are the very, very common one. Uh, and then uh, Apis antiniformis, Apis floria, very, very small, our uh, species. Then Apis dorsata and Apis laboriosa, which is mostly uh, distributed among the uh, Himalayan region, including this uh, Bhutan, Nepal, and other uh, uh, countries. So there was some information about this our, uh, wasp, uh, fig, and they are also playing major role for the pollination of the our uh, keystone species, that is the ficus trees. Diptera and hemiptera have also been recorded uh, uh, pollinating some of the crops. This is the actually bee diversity of India. How many species are known? How many genera from the world? How many species from known in India? World data has been taken up uh, by the Asher and Pickering. 2020 and 554 uh, uh, genera pertaining to seven families uh, have been reported globally. Of, out of these seven uh, families, only six are reported from India, and total number of species are presently at 817 species. Uh, like quality DD, 32 species, and NAD, 51, LICTD, 232. Mele T D five, then Mega Chile D two hundred fifty seven, FAD two hundred forty, and Stono three T D, which is not known from India. We do not have any species from India. See the any uh, because uh, IRI division of entomology and many other scientists in ICR, they have been working on this our uh, apiculture and many bees species. They can send uh, the bee for identification to JSI region being uh, uh, we had one of the scientists who was also trained in uh, Division of Entomology, IRI, Dr. Uh, Rajiv uh, Kumar hmm, Gupta, uh, under Dr. Yadav, and he, uh, later on he joined Jodhpur University. Throughout his life, he has been working on the super family of Oidea. Uh, we are fortunate that we have uh, his, uh, one of the most experienced uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Jagdish Saini, and for his uh, last 15 years, he has been contributing we have the entire our collection of Rajiv Gupta with us. And then anyone interested for identification of the Apoidia species, they can send it to Geological Survey of India. This is just, again, the comparison of the species. This uh, family, our uh, genus Megachil, is having 108 species out of uh, 817 species. We have our also doing this, our uh, uh, distribution in all 10 biogeographic zones as far as the bee diversity is concerned. So maximum diversity has been reported from the Deccan Peninsula, uh, followed by this uh, uh, semi-arid region, that is uh, Haryana, then uh, Punjab, part of Delhi, as well as the Gujarat, and some part of the Rajasthan. Since he was based in Jodhpur, much of the exploration documentation was carried out uh, in the semi-arid region, and 263 species have been recorded, that is maximum uh, in any of the biogeographic zone in India. And similarly, for all other group orders, families, we are having the uh, our information. I'm taking the example family of idea, but all orders now we have distributed in 10 biogeographic zones as for our information. Available. So we were interested to have information as for the biogeographic zone as well as state wise and of India. There are other groups like thrips, on the beetles, the moths and butterflies. They have also been uh, uh, playing uh, a major role for our uh, pollination. In recent times, for last two years, one of our colleague, Dr. Naunit Singh, he was granted one project under the National Mission of Himalayan Studies to take up the uh, significance of the moths. We have been uh, uh, knowing about all other uh, group of insects, but moth uh, as a pollinator was never known from the India. So last two years, he had been working on it and uh, they have extracted the poro proboscis of all the moth specimens. And they have also scanned the pollens from the proboscis under scanning electron microscope. So he has got 67 species of the moths in different families like Sphingidae, Noctuidae, Notodontidae, Geometridae, and Iribidae, they have been found as a positive for the pollens. 
uh, the, this is the project that is assessing of moths as significant pollinators in the Himalayan ecosystem of northeastern India was undertaken for last uh, two years from 2018. And significant findings have been actually carried out by this. Uh, one interesting in, uh, and, um, information, which I want to mention, that although these insects, as well as the flowers of the NGO sperms, the bushes, uh, and other vegetations, they are uh, co-evolved, actually, in the evolutions. So uh, Charles Darwin predicted uh, after seeing orchid species because of the length of its uh, uh, flower uh, that a moth would be discovered in the area where a proboscis that is 11 inches long, at least about one foot long a uh, flower uh, uh, was there. So scientists have since then found a species of moth in that area and the pollinate that orchid uh, which has a corolla tube with the length of 11 inches. So if you see those evolve and the structure of the flowers, we can find out what could be the proboscis of the insects by which this has been uh, pollin being pollinated. So it's one of the incidents which I just want to mention. This is about uh, Dr. Uh, Naoni Singh, 2019. He has uh, published some of the informations as uh, more significant uh, pollinators in India and Himalaya, how many total proboscis, uh, number of specimens he has uh, uh, extracted, then how many slides he has made it, slide potential for the pollinations, and how many families there were there which have been identified. So out of total number of uh, proboscis which have been extracted of the moth species, 13.3 percent have been found potential, actually pollinators for different groups. So this is uh, actually one of the uh, scanning electron uh, microscope uh, uh, figure of the pollen of the tetra under SEM taken in Geological Survey of India. And then uh, one of the flower from it has been recorded. Sericulture, we have a four uh, uh, very important species. And this has been practiced uh, even uh, uh, 4,700 BC in our neighboring countries in uh, our part in India. And, uh, silk is uh, one of uh, very uh, important fabric for uh, Indians uh, and it's uh, considered to be luxury. Uh, everyone is fond of silk. Uh, there are four varieties or uh, four species, I can say, of the silks uh, known from our country and two are uh, uh, mostly indigenous to this uh, northeastern part, that is uh, Munga silk, large in Assam and some other part of uh, northeastern region, that is Anthrae Assamensis. It was evolved from the uh, wild species. Mulberry silk had been dos domesticated almost uh, throughout India, but there are a few states like uh, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, Jammu and Kashmir, which had been taken up by the Aisha and the Silk Board of India, they have a station there. Tussark silk, which is very, very common in central India. Uh, this species is Thraya Milita. Then Iri also grown in Assam state, state that is Samya Santhia. Uh, Munga silk is very, very precious. Even one sari cost more than one lakh rupees if it is actually made of the Munga silk. And uh, it's, uh, I think, uh, maybe uh, invaluable in many of the cases. So even getting this Munga silk sari, it's uh, uh, a privilege for any of the citizen. Apiculture, uh, as I have mentioned, there are the six species uh, known from India, Epis serana and Epis mellifera, the more suitable for the agriculture and as far as the export and import of uh, the quantity of the uh, honey is there around uh, 61,333 metric tons have uh, been uh, exported from our country and which was earlier in 2018 it was 51,546 so this uh, uh, bee culture or agriculture has got a lot of economic uh, and thousands of you know, lakhs of people have been given employment because of that. And the value has been estimated about 1,700 crores in our market. Then coming to lock culture, ICR is having one institute in uh, uh, Rachi, a lock uh, research institute. My one of the friend, uh, Dr. K.K. Sarma, he's uh, heading the organization. And I don't want to give in the detail, but uh, 
India is the second largest uh, producer of the lac uh, throughout the world after the France and 15.6% of the product of the lac has been made by our country. That is worth uh, uh, 17,163.78 billion rupees uh, published by Yogi et al. in 2018. One of the recent uh, I think findings, and that is getting a lot of uh, actually um, news in the Himalayan region, that is a Kira Jari. This is uh, one of the fungus species, Cordyceps uh, chinensis. In the mar um, global market, this particular fungus, which uh, is a parasite on the caterpillar of the many of those uh, uh, moth species, about 30 plus species have been uh, uh, known so far. The price is uh, of this Kira Jari, which, which has been uh, uh, considered as one of the aphrodisiac uh, medicine is having 18 lakh uh, rupees per kilogram. This uh, particular medicine is also available in some of the international uh, airports, maybe Bhutan and Nepal. And one one just majestic uh, uh, box size uh, or boxes, they are uh, having I mean, lakhs of rupees value. So this is, uh, I think, uh, now being explored in uh, Himalayan region during this, wherever this uh, covered by the sea, uh, our snow part. This uh, particular fungus infecting this uh, caterpillar of a uh, moth species. Uh, one such uh, rich biological resource is there in the Himalaya. And that is also given uh, employment to lakhs of people there. Uh, natural enemies, parasitoids, we have biological control uh, uh, division in IRI. They have been working on parasites and parasitoids. Even uh, ICFRI, TFRI uh, in Jabalpur, they have been reading several uh, parasites and parasitoids. But as per our information, we have 800 species of the Chalcidoidea, which are uh, associated with the targeted biocontrol bio program around the world uh, as per our information. And there are the major parasitoid family in Chalcidoidea, the Elophidae, Pteromyelidae, Insectidae, Ephilnidae, Eupelmidae, and this is Chalcidity. I'm, I'm happy to just inform here. We have the expert for all these families in uh, Geological Survey of India, Dr. Rajmona, Dr. Sureshan, Dr. Uh, uh, Satish, many of our uh, uh, scientists have been working on Chalcidoidea exclusi, which are the parasite as well as the uh, parasitoids. So this is uh, about the predators like coxillates have been, in, uh, I think, considered as one of the predator species. Last, uh, I think, our uh, Dr. Aspadhan lecture, you might have been listening to this lecture of uh, uh, Dr. Onkar Singh. He has elaborated about this or uh, biocontrol on those species. Insects of the medical and veterinary importance. This information also has been uh, uh, compiled by Geological Survey of India. They are known to transmit protozoans, bacteria, viruses, nematodes, malaria, dengue, and then uh, chikungunya, yellow fever, Japanese insectilis. So these are uh, the a list and the compilation which we have made uh, as far as the medical and veterinary insects are concerned. Our total species are uh, 2,337 species pertaining to six uh, orders of insects. The maximum species are pertaining to the supplies and then followed by this uh, theropterans, that is the thrips and the cockroaches. Uh, and the last uh, one is the some of the beetles they have been reported as uh, medical and July the veterinary parts. So this is the recent it's a still unpublished one. This uh, programs we have been undertaken in JSI for last three years. That is about the climate change impact, I know, and the potential indicator tax of our tracking climate change in Indian Himalayan landscape. Uh, under this project. Uh, for which I was the PI, already more than 4,000 species of Lepidoptera, butterflies and moths have been recorded uh, from the Himalayan, Indian Himalayan regions. Out of these uh, 4,000 plus species known from the Himalaya, 1,750 species of the moths which have been identified up to the species level 
as well as 484 species of butterflies were recorded by JDSI for last three years. And there were 88 species of new records which were made from you. This document is also published and will be, this is just linkages between these three, our components, as I have uh, discussed uh, previously about uh, entomofauna ecosystem services and how we are getting the livelihood from all the, this, uh, almost 100% of the insects, which are actually not only the species, but also they are the biomass for, uh, as a food resource for many of uh, our other animals, as well as uh, uh, giving the basic, uh, our uh, facilities as for the livelihood. And that is why it's now necessary for all of us to pass on entire our uh, uh, diversity, biodiversity particularly to our uh, next generation. Uh, and the last, I would just uh, want to mention something about our uh, JSI contribution to the molecular systematics uh, with the advancement of integrated facilities in uh, JSI during 2011, uh, which uh, this particular uh, technique, which is uh, uh, being implemented in JSI very recently, it not only helps in the discovery of the new species, but also to eliminate the below species level, cryptic species, species complexes. And there is already one program by Convention of Biological Diversity, that is CBD at international to have a digital sequencing information for all the species of the biodiversity. And we are having three major program in JSI. That is not only the DNA, barcoding for all the species which are endemic to India, included under IUCN, Wildlife Protection Act, threatened species, pest and vector species, then keystone species, ecologically important species, holotype and paratype, so that that could be compared in the, then uh, 4,000 uh, uh, specimens and uh, uh, DNA barcodes have already been uh, uh, prepared for the insects that include thrips, moths, butterflies, and then beetles, bees, and grasshoppers, and metagenomics that is called as a mitochondrial actually a DNA and complete uh, mitochondrial DNA of 50 threatened species, uh, including the vector thrips, have been also generated. And these are the groups which we have been undertaking the studies that is for the genomics, classification, and the taxonomy, geography, then ecology, and habitat and habitats. So one can also find out. Uh, what are the habitat from where the pest has uh, uh, originated so that we can get it through DNA barcoding. And through. so these are the, some of the studies we have taken up in JSI and last four or five years, these publications were made uh, like a DNA barcoding studies on the thrips in the India, cryptic species and species complexes uh, in which uh, 370 DNA barcodes and this is actually pertaining to 89 species of uh, uh, thrips. Uh, in India, we are having 800 species known from the country and several cryptic species they have been resolved. And IRI and many uh, institutions under ICR uh, being a uh, major pest in India, they have been working. I'm happy to share the information that Dr. Vikas Kumar and Dr. Kumut Tyagi, they are the uh, expert and authority on the thrips they have been trained in NBIR and last, uh, I think, four to five years they are working. Uh, Dr. Kumud and last uh, 10 years, Dr. Vikas Kumar has been working in Geological Survey of India. So DNA barcoding of selected uh, uh, Cetothrips species from India, molecular footprint of one of the species of the major pest, and that is also the vector of the Topso virus recorded this is with regard to the species of the uh, geometry moths, which had been published in Taylor and Francis uh, uh, publications, micro, mitochondrial DNA. This is one of the genus uh, geometry that is Abraxas. Uh, we are having more than 400 specimens of this Abraxas, and not two specimens are similar. So once we have uh, done the DNA barcoding and analyzed through this our uh, uh, phylogeny characteristics so that we could know that there are many species and that assessment is still going on. This will be published very soon. 
as far as the bees are concerned this uh, study was also taken up by jdsi not all the species but uh, uh, jdsi has generated 156 uh, our uh, bee uh, specimen data and that is also published in uh, one of the scientific report dna barcoding of selected uh, sort grot horn hoppers uh, known from himalayan region identification to dna barcoding of the tabani vectors that is causing the sura disease then dna barcoding reveals host associated genetics uh, diversity of the t mosquito that is uh, helopeltis theora known from the india then the first complete mitochondrial region of marigold pest thrips uh, and the comparative analysis published by jdsi the complete mitochondrial genome of the melon thrips that's published by jdsi the rearrangement and evolution of mitochondrial genome in thysoptera that also been published very recently in scientific reports this is actually the largest initiative by geological survey of including including uh, 370 dna barcodes pertaining to 89 species of thrips from india this is uh, about the threats to the insect harvest in whole country as well as the global level i don't want to go into detail because i have to complete uh, uh, the presentation and these are the global threats from is invasive alien species uh, we have a complete top uh, complete list of uh, invasive alien species from our country from the sea scape from the marine area we have a 99 species of animal starting from this uh, uh, phylum nidaria then there are uh, rept or uh, vertebrates uh, and there are 58 species uh, of animals which are having in the landscape so total 157 species have been reported of these 31 species pertaining to eight orders are uh, belonging to the insects like blattodia thysanoptera hemiptera hymenoptera coleoptera lepidoptera and uh, diptera mostly the insect pest categories and they have been reported from india 31 species have been reported from india the the two species are the termites uh then the three species of the thrips then the, there are the 14 species and seven genera of the hemiptera uh this is about the hemipterans you can see the lantana bug cottony cushion scale then papaya mealy bug cotton mealy bug then gall was for was uh, and then coffee berry bear the two species and two genera the tuber uh, potato tuber moth one of the common species is very i think common species that is uh, diamond back moth it's a uh, exotic species uh, introduced uh, in india in 1914 and many places almost throughout india you can get uh, this uh, pest which is a polyphagus and different uh, vegetation crops yellow fever mosquito which is causing dengue uh many of our uh, uh, regions in our country a lot of our uh, we are losing our lot of uh, our livelihood to the people then serpentine leaf miner which was uh, uh, introduced in our country 1992 through our uh, ornamental crops a uh, trade of the insect is also going on in our country particularly insects and other uh, invertebrates uh, even mounted butterflies and moths have been uh, sold in the market uh, earlier in uh, eastern northeast india but now because of the wildlife protection act this actually uh, trade activities are reduced although in many other european countries and america they are sold in the market and they have the local market also for all these things i have seen these insects have been actually more mounted in uh, key chains i don't know whether it's coming from the china or they have been collected from india itself but that has to be a certain maybe a authority from asia or they may take up uh, this issue and the apollo butterfly which is only di distributed uh, in the himalayan region and it's very very precious one it is having 100 pound uh, value in many of the european countries and the population of this apollo butterflies across himalayan regions are uh, decreasing uh 450 species around for some of the beetles 38 species of the beetles one or two species of the insects they have been included in the wildlife protection act we are having several uh, 
wildlife protection act for, for conservation there are two types that in, in situ conservation and ex situ conservations and uh, there is a need for uh, insect and butterfly gardens throughout india we have few butterfly gardens in our country some of them are uh, working very nicely and they are also uh, required for our genetic bank this is open type of butterfly garden which i have seen in hong kong during my visit in 2006 and this is a close type of butterfly garden situated in barnaghata butterfly uh, butterfly national park just outside the butterfly in bangalore and now the challenge for all of us to all the entomologists including taxonomists is uh, to describe the undiscovered species as i have mentioned in my earlier slides there is a possibility of the uh, five lakh species which are uh, uh, existing in our country we know about only 66911 species so remaining species are to be recorded and described and this number we could able to do it for last 260 years but remaining are more than 4 lakh species how we are going to describe before they become extinct so this is a challenge for all of us i don't know how much time it's going to take it but if you can have this uh, synergy and the integrated approach particularly by using the modern tool of uh, taxonomy at least up to some extent we will be able to describe and report these species and from in uh, this is some of the gap area which i just want to share with our uh, uh non entomologist uh, we do not have the complete catalog even till today of this uh, uh, which is published we have the list with us in jrsi but it's not yet published uh, pertaining to order coleoptera hymenoptera lepidoptera diptera and uh, hemiptera which are having more than 80% of the species and then then we have to take up the studies in the macro level as well as the micro level if you want to study the genera genus or species or the sub families then only at least number of more species could be described and for our conservation to have assessment and the sovereign rights of our country we should know the insect fauna of all our bio, uh, geographic zones for all the prot uh, 907 protected areas 50 tiger reserves there are uh, Uh, 16 yeah, elephant reserves 18 bass reserves more than 400 uh, eco sensitive zone are also notified by the government of india so discovering the undiscovered uh, particularly new species and new record should be the prime i think uh, uh, or priority for all of us then there are many threatened species which have been included uh, under icn 31 species are there and therefore bad host hot spots long term monitoring of impact of climate change for all these species so that we have a periodic uh, database whether any species is declining or the population is increasing uh, digital sequence information of all those species so we have a chip at least in the coming time if you have a 271 species of the pest and major pest if you have a chip for all those pest species dna barcode at least uh, if any of the new uh, pest is there it could be compared in one one click so that is my suggestions and uh, we have been working for this uh, augmentation of the remaining insect species not available in uh, repository in india so the remaining species of insects may be 30000 plus uh, which we have been given the priority and there is a need for the synergy between fri iri jsi and many other historical collections in bangalore uh, maybe chennai so that we can have the complete database of insects of india and there is need for the historical uh, our collections to study in the climate change uh, then dna barcoding for to study this uh, cryptic species for the phylogenetic analysis since insect comprise about 77000 species and many of them are uh, associated with the forestry agriculture health soil water uh, and other ecosystems and they also uh, contributing for many of the ecosystem services to solve this taxonomic problem ultimate is to have a chip for all the species with this uh, again i uh, acknowledge with thanks to all my colleagues from geological survey of india 
particularly to Dr. Raghunathan, Dr. Devansu Gupta, Dr. Naunit Singh, Dr. Anil Dube from Paul Bay. They have uh, uh, helped me for this making this presentation. With this, I conclude my presentation. I understand this might have taken a little more time, but uh, even then, I think uh, I may be excused for taking a little more time. Thank you very much to all the uh, uh, participants for having the patient sharing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to Dr. Kailas Chandra sir for giving deep insights and clear picture on entomofauna and ecosystem which is existing in India. May I request our Honorable Director IARI, Dr. A.K. Singh sir to launch previous Dr. S. Pradhan Memorial Lectures on Divisional Web Page. Sir, please. Madam, any question or anything? Uh, Maybe so, yeah, we are coming. Sir. So this is the compilation of uh, Dr. Pradhan Memorial Lecture Series. And so far, uh, 12 lectures have been delivered. And uh, today's lecture that was delivered by Dr. Kalashandra, you can see the complete uh, write up there. And this provides a beautiful compilation of all the lectures that have been done in past. And uh, it's worth uh, going through this uh, documentation and publication. Uh, I, I thank the entire team for bringing out these publications. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, I also request you to give chairman remarks. I think if you want to take some questions, sir, Dr. Chandra said, and I'm, I'm sure with uh, such a uh, wonderful lecture. There must be uh, a lot of questions that we would like to clarify. We can have uh, at least few questions from the audience. None? Uh, sir, there are lots of yeah. questions. We'll answer them later on because okay. uh, Okay, I mean, uh, not in the chat box, but if there is any live questions, one of those who are in the panel, uh, if they want to ask some questions. So this was basically for the panelists. And uh, maybe I can, I can uh, just for my knowledge, I would like to ask in terms of, you know, uh, the contribution of insects as a pollinator to uh, food grain production. Now, this is one aspect it was so interesting to hear from Dr. Chandra. I am not sure if uh, there is any quantification that has been done in the Indian context, identifying what are the crops which are cross-pollinated and which are based on entomophily. And in those crops, what is the total area? What is total production? If the insects are available, what is the yield? If insects are not available for pollination, what is the yield reduction? This kind of statistics. And uh, if these insects were not there, how much yield losses would happen? Uh, whether this kind of analysis at national level has been done crop-wise in Indian context or not. Thank you very much, sir, for your compliments and uh, uh, your query for this, uh, regarding this pollinators. Uh, as far as my knowledge, I have been doing mostly the taxonomic work of uh, uh, the pollinators, particularly these are bees and uh, total uh, Poidia, I have mentioned earlier, 817 species have been documented. But Dr. Rajiv Gupta, who has been working in Jodhpur University for many years, he has produced several theses on individual crops and what are the auditors which have been visiting, uh, maybe cereals and then other crops. And those information are available with us, but we have not published any such information or in statistics by Geological Survey of India uh, so far. Uh, so this is very interesting. I think we'll take up this issue. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, uh, division of entomology, because this is subject that exclusively deals with agriculture in association with Geological Survey of India. You can do no, this kind of a study and documentation. It would be wonderful. Any, any other questions? Can I... Dr. Dr. Chandis Blah. Yeah. Please. 
Uh, Dr. Kailash Chandra, that was a brilliant presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, I just have one little query. Um, uh, when you say that uh, the maximum number of species come under the um, order Hymenoptera, etc., uh, is it by any way related to the taxonomists, the number of taxonomists who are working on that particular group? Is it influenced by that? Uh, this kind of a data, whether it is in a global level or in uh, our national uh, data, whatever we are generating. Is it related to the number of taxonomists working on a particular group? Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Uh, as far as the statistics and the number of species uh, known pertaining to different orders of insects are concerned, uh, if you go through the database, I think maximum number of species are represented by the beetles. And that is 22,000 plus species are reported from India, uh, followed by this Hymenoptera. It's around uh, 10,000 plus species. Then, then uh, Hemiptera, Diptera, uh, uh, these are the two orders which are following. But Hymenoptera, I will not say it's only because of the scientists who having the maximum number in JSI. There are other groups on which they have been working. And this is actually this uh, um, information from the global level that uh, diversity as far as the Hymenoptera is concerned. It's in the same level, about uh, six to 7% of the uh, whole world people compared with the other group of insects. So it's not only the matter uh, number of scientists who are working because JSI is not exclusive working on the Hymenoptera. There are many scientists from uh, IRI, FRI, and universities that have been working. So it, in together, if it is coming to that. Yes, madam, you want to comment anything? Uh, Sir, I think, okay, so please continue. Right, okay. All right, uh, thank you uh, very much. It was a wonderful presentation. Uh, distinguished speaker of uh, 12th uh, Dr. S. Pradhan Memorial Lecture, uh, Professor Kalashandra, Director of Geological Survey of India, Dr. H. S. Gore, our former Dean, uh, Dr. Prem Jit Singh, I saw he is uh, uh, there, Vice Chancellor of Central Ecology University in Nepal, Dr. Vivi Patel, former Vice Chancellor of U.S. Raichur, Dr. Krishna Kumar, former DDG ICR, former directors of NBAIR, Dr. Chandish Blal and uh, Dr. Braham Bargis, uh, Dr. Alfred and Dr. Ramakrishna, uh, members of Dr. Pradhan family uh, and uh, head division of uh, entomology, Dr. Devjani, all the uh, staff and students of the institute and participants who are attending uh, this particular webinar. Uh, it was a wonderful uh, presentation looking at the insect uh, biodiversity and their role in maintaining the agri-eco uh, system. Uh, I am pleased to know that Dr. Chandra, you know, started uh, his uh, career at IARI and uh, he has uh, made tremendous uh, contribution uh, in this field. Uh, he emphasized upon the role of uh, insects and uh, as uh, pollinators. And as a geneticist, I know how important insects are uh, the Drosophila melanogaster is known as the uh, queen of uh, genetics. All the basic principles of genetics, the salivary gland chromosome of Drosophila, still a very important model system to study the chromosome uh, organization, structure, and uh, uh, many aspects. Uh, so uh, this is, uh, again, you know, I must say that uh, the topic which I was referring to uh, in Indian context, the global uh, analysis have been done. And uh, I was looking at some data from the bear crop sciences where they uh, have demonstrated that the total contribution uh, by insect pollination through, uh, you know, the annual global food production is uh, to the tune of 235 to 575 uh, billion dollar. And imagine without pollinators more than 39 crops, uh, and this is global list, which could see a decline in production. Uh, and in order to meet the demands, the farmers would be forced to pursue more intensive and less environmentally friendly sustainable practices. More area will go under cultivation. And then if you look at the carbon footprint of those cultivation uh, uh, practices, it is going to be enormous. And therefore, 
Uh, although the insects, they live in our vicinity, they do a lot of job for us as a pollinator and for enhancing production and productivity of crops, particularly in vegetables, many fruits. Uh, but uh, neither uh, crop management scientists nor breeders ever realize the importance that is being played by the uh, insect in the productivity enhancement. Uh, this kind of analysis is very, very important, uh, particularly in the Indian context where we have crop-wise uh, data generated and with simulated uh, experiments where we have beehives uh, and uh, the one where we don't have and what kind of loss in productivity happens and how important uh, uh, you know uh, the pollinators are in the entire agriculture system. So this is one area I think uh, we must uh, focus our research on. Dr. Chandra covered the, the you know the entire range of diversity of insects including important orders and their significance. He also highlighted the need to write a phone of India on the various families of economically essential groups and to undertake these studies on DNA barcoding for very systemic, uh, systematic analysis. I would also like to urge at this point of time uh, and in this context to our entomology friend to kindly uh, document uh, the insect uh, biodiversity, insect biodiversity uh, that exists in the IARI campus uh, with beautiful pictures. And I would like to see a coffee table book where you have uh, 150, 200 pages, uh, where we have very close up nice pictures describing the uh, insect order, their behavior, uh, in a very brief write up and a beautiful picture. Particularly, what is the diversity available on our campus? We will do at the national level, maybe at later stage, but let us start from our campus. The other day I was discussing with one of my friend, Dr. Pralev Homik, who is a uh, keen photographer, and he has uh, photographed uh, more than 100 birds species during this season, particularly you know from June until now. And I asked him to bring out uh, a, a publication in terms of coffee table book on bird diversity, continue this first for the next uh, uh, you know, uh, Ravi season also because the diversity will change, the composition of birds will change. Uh, because those documentations in terms of uh, knowing the habitat in which we live is very, very important. Uh, not many people, uh, we know the birds by their even common name or English name, or forget about the scientific name. So this uh, uh, not only with respect to insect or birds, but also with respect to uh, the plants diversity that we have needs to be uh, documented and that will be a rich uh, collection of the diversity at the campus. Uh, we must look at this. Now, uh, Professor Chandra's lecture is a rich uh, tribute to Dr. Pradhan, uh, who was a pioneer in taking up several initiatives and including his pioneering work on uh, locust. Uh, we organized uh, a few months back a webinar on locust, their management, because this has become a menace in last two years. And uh, then we, uh, when we tried, uh, we're digging at the uh, past research done, Dr. Devjani did a wonderful work in compiling all the information, uh, research work done on locus, more than 12 theses have been published. But for the last 25 years, we were not working on this particular and very important insect. And this year, a lot of efforts have been made by the team entomology and uh, understanding the locust uh, behavior. Uh, uh, said it known, uh, uh, a recent paper came in Nature where this uh, gene and its, its, its importance uh, in aggregation of insect has been very well uh, demonstrated. And whether one can do a reverse engineering uh, to control or decontrol the uh, aggregation behavior of the insect. Those are challenging areas. And also Dr. Pradhan did a lot of work on, you know, uh, neem as a biopesticide. Uh, also for locust control. It's still, it is being used in very limited scale and uh, uh, it is not uh, notified uh, by CIVRC for the control of locust uh, per se. Now, uh, this lecture has uh, brought together uh, the whole gamut of information available on the uh, insect uh, diversity, insects uh, role in science, in society, in providing food security in both uh, connotation uh, in positive sense and also in negative sense. The insect uh, 
the harmful insects, how they cause and how much losses happen because of insects and the uh, insecticide that is used to control them and the impact of those insecticide on the environment, on water, on soil, all these things are so important to, uh, to know and to document. I would like to compliment uh, uh, the entire uh, division of uh, cosmology for organizing this wonderful uh, lecture and uh, my heartful uh, thanks to Professor Chandra for uh, agreeing to deliver Dr. Pradhan Memorial Lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, you very much, sir. Thank you very much. For Thank you, sir, for your valuable remarks. I request our Honorable Director, IARI, Dr. A.K. Singh, sir, to felicitate today's speaker, Dr. Kailash Chandra, sir. So this, this felicitation is all by distant uh, mode and in e-mode. So there is a plague uh, which has the name of, uh, I think you all can see, of Dr. Pradhan there with his photographs. We will deliver this to you, sir, at a later stage when things become normal. And uh, also we have a uh, uh, solve for you. So that also goes to you in the e-mode. And in addition to this, uh, I would like to present to you the pride of IRI. And this is one of our product, uh, uh, Pusa Basmati 1121. So this is a, a rice uh, variety, which is currently uh, bringing close to uh, uh, 30, 3,000 crores of foreign exchange earning. So this rice packet is a gift back from IRI to you and I would like to release and have your comment uh, on this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, giving me this opportunity. Sir, uh, sorry, certificate also. <laughs> so? The certificate also is being given. Okay, yeah, yeah. Kindly accept so. it, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Can you see, thank sir? You, sir. Thank, you, sir. thank you very much. Thank you, Raksha. Thank you. Yeah, the certificate yeah. displayed by Dr. Thank Rashmi you. Agrawal. We'll send thank it, you, sir. And thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And thank you, ma'am. May I request Dr. Subhash Chandar, sir, Professor, Division of Entomology, to propose vote of thanks. Very good afternoon to everybody. Honorable Director and Vice Chancellor, IERI, Dr. A.K. Singh, Dean and Joint Director of Education, Dr. Rashmi Agarwal, Dr. Kalash Chandra, the Speaker of the Day, other dignitaries, Honorable Guests, scientists, students, ladies and gentlemen. After successful conclusion of the memorial lecture, in the name of one of the doyens of entomology in India, it is my humble duty to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of Division of Entomology and on my personal behalf. We express a deep sense of gratitude to Dr. A.K. Singh, our esteemed director, for very kindly having agreed to be the chief guest at the occasion of 12th Dr. S. Pradhan Memorial Lecture, despite his extremely busy schedule. In fact, today also there was a meeting, but he spared his valuable time and uh, be present here. Sir, you, you instantly accepted our request without a second thought, which reflects your keen interest in academic and overall development of the Institute. We are indeed very thankful. <laughs> we are greatly indebted to Dr. Rashmi Agarwal, the Dean of Joint Director of Education, for having agreed to preside over the function and gracing the occasion, despite her preoccupations. Madam, your constant support and encouragement throughout the process of organization of this lecture is greatly acknowledged. Heartful thanks are due to Dr. Kalash Chandra, Director, Geological Survey of India, Kolkata, and Honorable Speaker of the day for kindly accept, accepting our request to deliver the memorial lecture and enlightening the audience on a very relevant topic related to conservation of biodiversity, ecosystem services, which are very crucial for society and livelihood. It is a matter of greater happiness and pride for us that you were associated with IRI in the beginning of your career and you have rose to the post of director of one of the premier organizations of India. I also compliment you for having been nominated for this prestigious award. 
We are also grateful to Dr. V. K. Singh, Joint Director Extension, for his constant support and encouragement throughout the process of organization of this lecture. We profusely thank the daughters of late Dr. S. Pradhan, Mrs. Ragini Varma, and Mrs. Shalini, and their family members for accepting our invitation and gracing the occasion. We are thankful to our dignitaries, Dr. Krishan Kumar, Deputy Director, former Deputy Director General, Dr. H. S. Gore, former Dean IERI and Vice Chancellor, Sadar Vallabhai Patel University, Dr. Prem Jeet Singh, Vice Chancellor, Central Agriculture University, Dr. B. B. Patil, former Vice Chancellor, Dr. Abraham Varghese and Dr. Chandish Bilal, former Directors, NVAIR, former Directors of ZSI, for gracing the occasion. Heartful thanks are due to the directors of ICR institutes, heads of divisions, professors, retired heads and professors, retired scientists, scientists, scientists of ZSI and other ICR institutes and other organizations, students and other staff for taking out time for their, out of their busy schedule and attending the lecture. Special thanks are due to Dr. Raj Shri Roy Varman, Principal Scientist, Agriculture Extension, IERI, for facilitating webcasting of this program. And we also thank NAHEP. We are thankful to Entomological Society of India for its constant support in organization of this series of memorial lectures during all these years. We express deep sense of gratitude to the chairpersons and members of different uh, committees constituted for the purpose and without their support, it would not have been possible to organize this lecture. Finally, we thank all scientific, technical, administrative, and supporting staff who directly or indirectly helped in the organization of this lecture. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Thank you, Subhash, sir. On behalf of the organizing committee and, I, and on my own behalf, I thank one and 